all this stuff here has just recently showed up. Vintage store purchases, secondhand stores, plus things that my viewers have sent in to me. Let's take a little time, go over all this stuff, see what kind of treasures we've got. Welcome back to another edition of Classic Model Trains. I'm Ron. This episode here, it's another one of those there haul videos. Vintage store, secondhand store, antique store, donation center stores. I hit them all up. Spending money on trains always, always makes a guy feel better. So this is some of the stuff I've picked up in the last couple months. Just kind of want to show it to you guys. There'll be uh, repair videos coming up with some of the stuff, you know, showcased in these repair videos. And also I want to do one of these mail calls. People, people have been donating stuff to the channel. It's absolutely awesome. Thank you guys so much for doing this. And, you know, I want to sh show this stuff off to these people. Some of this stuff, it meant something to them. They, they want to, you know, they want to make their, their, their locomotives or their models famous with, like, t the 15 to 20 people that watch my channel. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's get underway. This here is all the Marks stuff that I managed to find at the secondhand stores and antique stores here in Billings over the last month. Start off here with this. I believe that this is a number 597. It is a Commodore Vanderbilt. It's a clockwork, that means wind up locomotive. It's missing its tender, but it is, you know, if it was in a set, it would have came with these type of six inch cars, tin lithographed, printed, stamped, nice and quick, painful, cheap, easy peasy. Then I managed to scare up almost a complete New York Central freight set. The only thing that I ended up missing on this one would be the caboose. This set would have ended up looking like this. This is an electric pickup one. Unfortunately, this locomotive has been repainted. Not that these things are worth, you know, a ton of money anyway. For doing this kind of custom customization to them. This here passenger car, it would have been in Marks's number 1095 Santa Fe passenger set, which features an AA set of E7s with two of these 5132 coaches, and it would have had a 3197 observation car. Set would look a lot like this right here. A couple more tin plates. This here is the 9100 Union Pacific Challenger tin lithograph box car. And this is the number 92812 Redding. Hey, look, I said it right. The Redding Railroad Caboose. I did manage to scare up a couple of these 666 locomotives right here. They were, they first were introduced in 1955. And uh, somebody really made this here tender really pretty. This is a custom, custom job right here. So these locomotives, they, they, they claim to run forever. They are just so simple and easy. Die cast. So pretty nice little set there. This steamer right here, I believe it is number 401. And these originally came as a uh, wind-up or as a battery-operated in a starter set. Really super, super cheap locomotive. Somebody's re repowered this. Because Mark stuff, you can just you can change things around on them. They didn't, they didn't do a lot of creative re-engineering on things. So I could actually take this power set, and I could put it in this this tender, and it will literally bolt bolt right in there. So it's kind of interesting about Marks that way. This this thing right here, this is a poor example of the GE seventy ton switcher. This came in a set number 7215. These were out from 1972 to 1974. These little sets, and yeah, they, they pretty much look just like that. So this here is an overview of all the Marks 027 stuff. Marks uses an O-gauge three rail track, but these cars were 3 16th inch scale. AC Gilbert American Flyer would also use this 3 16th inch scale on all their S-gauge stuff. I want to throw a shout out to Lynn McCurdy with the High Desert Modular Model Railroad Club. They're located in the Antelope Valley region of Southern California. These these fellers and, and fellettes, they've got a modular 
Modular layout, they travel around with it. They take that thing on tour, set it up, and they're helping promote the model railroad hobby. Well, as it turns out, while they're busy doing that, on their layout, they've got these little billboards that they put on there, little scale billboards that are promoting other YouTube channels that are promoting model railroading. I happen to end up being one of them. They've been kind of busy promoting my channel out there while they're out on tour with these little billboards and advertisements and stuff like that. You can find these guys here at this web address or you can go over to YouTube to Lynn McCurdy and the HDMMRC. It's got some YouTube videos out there. Great bunch of guys. I want to say thank you so much for promoting my channel and also promoting other model railroading channels that are on YouTube. That's awesome of you guys. Thank you. Jumping into the Lionel stuff that I've got. From 1951 to 1953, Lionel offered this 2026 264. Now this one, of course, you see it's 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 missing the two and it's the four. And actually, if you get to look at it in here, it's missing its E unit and and uh, it's been robbed. And then I I found another one. It's been repainted 2100, but it is a 2026. And it's got all of its pieces parts right there. So I can take these guys and make them into one, one good properly numbered one with the proper factory paint on it. These normally came with this tender right here, the 6466. I got this whistling, whistling unit. And of course this isn't a, this is a non-whistler, but I suppose if I keep being patient, I can get the parts that I need and make an actual whistling tender to go with the set. Now these two have operating headlights. They've got smoke units in them and a three position E unit. Well, this one don't because somebody stole it. But, mm, yep. A couple of MPC tenders. This Wabash would have came with an engine and in a set that looked like this. And then this C&O uh, would have had a locomotive that looked like this from doing a little, little shopping and looking around on eBay. This one here must have made some noise because there is some holes in the top of that coal load there. So chug or electronic steam or something like that. Found this little fella right here. It's a 1956 to 1958 Wabash operating brake man. There's a little solenoid inside here. And then, you know, you got these little contacts right down here. And when you push the button, then the solenoid makes the guy lay down. Oh, yeah, got a box. But of course I'm missing the telltales or the poles or something that should have been up above it or there's something that the destruction said I didn't have. Getting onto it, oh, this big dog right here. Holy moly. Greatest find ever. The 2343 Santa Fe APA units right here. Oh, this is the good one that's got the mesh grills in it. It's got two power trucks underneath of it. It's got an electronic horn. You put a D-sized battery in here, and then when you hit the horn, blah, sure. 1950 to 1955, these sets were made. This is an unpowered B, and then this is an unpowered A. But it is lighted. So, oh, I couldn't believe I stumbled upon those. Oh, it was... That was ecstatic. Now these here are actually true O-gauge. They will not run on O27 corners. And you see, if you put a, if you get an O27 beside it, you can see the O27s, they're always smaller. They're scaled down some. So yeah, you gotta, don't let people tell you that O and O27 is the exact same thing. It's not. O27 is scaled smaller, so it can navigate the 27 inch radiuses. O scales, bigger. And they need big radius, 72 inch radiuses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So found those local vintage store finds. Now nobody else can buy this stuff from these stores because I own it all. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's go into what the PO box is, is brought, brought to me over the last five months, I think over the summertime. This is what people have donated to the channel. I was doing a video of these GP20s or I'd posted something online and this one had showed up. And it didn't have a didn't have a weight, so the, the very first thing that was ever sent to me was a was a brand new weight. Well, not a brand new one, but a new one. So Wayne S out there shipped this to me. Told me he's going to ship it in. I'm like, cool, get a weight for it. 
And then he also included these cool, this River Aussie sets right here. And because I think it's a River Aussie set, European. They got them, them hooks. I don't know what it is. Interesting set for their, I think the guys across the pond. They, they use stuff like this. So I appreciate it, Wayne. Thank you very much. I wanted to thank Jason M out there. He had sent all of this stuff in towards me. A lot of it needed some work, you know, that's no big deal. That's what I do is I, I work on them and stuff like that. So transformer switcher, Tyco switchers here. Uh, this Alco PA1 was uh, video was made out of it. And then this is the Hobby Town drive that we put the globe chassis on. So there was a video made out of this one. And then these cars here, I used those in the um, tuning up mid end, high end cars. So a lot of these stuff, there was there was videos made on a lot of these things. This is fantastic. These are Varney plastic F units right here, F3s plastic. Now I just got done making a video using cast zinc. So these are both plastic, that's pretty groovy. There's a shade that needs some work, a steamer. This is an Athern GP7. I've done a couple of videos on those so far. So once again, thank you very much for this stuff here, Jason. Next, I want to thank uh, William P. out there. He sent me in a lot of, a lot of neat stuff. This is a 10-wheeler Tyco in the Western and Atlantic. This is a Mahano uh, steam locomotive here. It's like a 260, and it is uh, converted, been converted to DC. So this, this one's coming up on a repair video. I haven't done any Mahanos yet, so I want to be doing that. Uh, a big boy locomotive model uh, made by Concor there. This Hershey's car, this is a this is a uh, a wooden one. This one is this one's old because uh, it's all made out of out of wood, which is really really pretty neat. Tyco crane car. Uh, this one here, I believe, is a Varney, and it is all wood. Also, this this is die cast. A uh, lot of really great detail on this. Super super nice one. I didn't even know that Katie made cars. Here we got a Katie Norfolk and Western box car in this fancy plastic case. Oh, jeez. That's pretty, pretty cool. But this here, here, look at that. That is a roundhouse Shea is what that is. And and uh, William tells me all the, all the pieces are there. So I was planning on working on this one in the winter to complete it. It does have all the destructions and uh, pictures that I could look at to try to figure out how to how to whoop it up. Great donation, thank you very much, William. I wanted to thank Stan S out there. Sent me in this Tyco F7 A and B unit. These are Mantua. I've already reworked these quite a bit. Painted the side trucks up on them. This has got two power trucks in it. Tyco MU 2.5 is what I like to call these because they've got the unscrewable you, you could you could take them apart. They're not like the MU2s that you can't. You can take these ones apart. So I put some power, two power trucks in those. Gonna make a video on those. So these ones came from Stan S out there. Thank you very much. Wanna throw a thanks out to John D out there in Chicago, Illinois. He sent in this interesting front range GP body. Now I don't know what front range, I, you know, it's, it's obviously a manufacturer. And it is sitting on a modified Athern chassis. So as soon as I get some more parts parts up to put this thing together, then we can, uh, you know, this little top comes off there. I'm thinking, well, maybe a guy will, maybe a guy will DCC this. You know, no sound. I don't need the sound. But uh, yeah. So thank you very much, John. I wanted to thank Mark H. He's out there. He's out there in Redlands, California. He sent all this stuff in here. These are globe uh, chassis, bodies, I should say, globe bodies, F7As and Bs, powered, non-powered. Apparently they've got globe drivetrains in them too. So they're different than the video I did with the globe F7 with the Hobby Town drive. So we can make a whole nother video out of showing off the globe chassis right here. Here's an older Athern GP7 with the power trucks. I'm curious if these are still blue box or maybe they're going down to yellow box with this particular kind of drive in it right there. And then, you know, treasures, box of treasures. 
I got a B unit that's just waiting for this to show up. That's awesome. Parts in there. And then this is a Walther's. It's a little industrial crane that he put together there. I got to figure out how to get the how to get the crane part to work though. I, I guess I'll have to I guess I'll have to read these. Lots of great paperwork. I'm gonna make sure that um, I'm gonna make sure that HO Seeker doesn't have these on their website. And if they don't, then I'm gonna scan them in and and uh, email them up to them. So that way everybody in the whole wide world can read this great information that we have that's been made available to me here. So thank you very much, Mark. I certainly appreciate it. This next one, it's, it's coming in from a feller named Doug E. He lives up there in Woodstock, Ontario. I didn't know there was a Woodstock, Ontario up there, but you might know him a little better. Is Forever DC 302. So I've been trying to fill up my Tyco collection up there, and I had a hell of a time getting this Via F unit for quite some time. Down here in the States, they're expensive, but if you're up in Canada, uh, I guess they're as common as the Santa Fe F units we have down here. Bachman Signal Bridge and merch. Forever DC 302's got merch. I don't even have merch. I gotta get some merch. So thank you very much out there, Doug. He also has got this little letter here that he sent me. And if I can read it right, he says he wants me to give Scotty a shout out. I think it's Scotty at Tiny Railroads in Delhi, Ontario. So if I, if I read that right, Scotty, shout out. Doug, Forever DC, thank you very much. I've got one more, one more thank you I want to throw out for stuff that's that's been mailed in. But this, this isn't going to get here until Monday. Well, if I get everything done right, I'll have this video up Sunday morning. So I happen to know that Nathan M. out there, he's down there in Southern Carolina. He's shipping up a 484 GS4 Southern Pacific Daylight made by Lionel. Now, unfortunately, this poor thing, it's succumbed to axle gear cracking. I've been informed. Well, he's hoping somehow we're going to be able to uh, maybe get it whooped into shape. Maybe run into somebody that knows how to print gears or something like that for it. It's going to look like this when it gets here. I even found the right, the right cab number and everything on the eBay there. Beautiful locomotive. But it ain't going to get here until Monday. So early shout out. I know it's coming. We've been in communication. Once again, thank you, Nathan, for shipping this up. Hopefully we can get her running again. A lot of stuff shows up in just a couple of months. I love it. I love it. My 12 by 20 cabin though, it's, she's busting at the seams. I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to panhandle a little extra harder. I might have to fix an extra RV or two this winter time with uh, furnace problems or something and uh, save up my money and build a steel building. It's definitely time for that. So thank you guys for watching. I'm Ron, Classic Model Trains. Bye-bye.